there is a word from God. This morning, I'll be coming from the text from the book of John, the ninth chapter, starting at the fourth verse, if you care to stand. John 9 and 4, I'll be reading from the King James Version. It reads that uh, I must work the works of him while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Before you sit down, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm sorry. But I'm in for tonight. You may be seated. I'm sorry, but I'm in for tonight. I want to begin by first apologizing. I know some of y'all may be a little upset. You came to church this morning in expectations of hearing a word from Pastor Witherspoon, but fortunate for some and unfortunate to others, you got me, Amen. Minister Johnson. But however, there still is some good news. And because of COVID guidelines and our restrictions, I will not be before you long, but I do hope that this message will last long in your life. So let me get into this message. Again, I am sorry, but I'm in for tonight. We often hear people say this phrase to another person who is trying to get them to leave the house. We will hear this phrase, especially when it's either late at night or just about to turn night. Now y'all don't miss what I'm saying. Time is winding down for the enemy and misery loves company. See that friend of me is always trying to get you to come out of the house. And sometimes they can be real manipulative, so manipulative to the point that you may feel compelled to want to leave the house. But see the person who know that they are staying home, will always begin this phrase by saying, I'm sorry. They would always give the apology first. And the reason why they will give the apology first to that person who is trying to get them to come out of the house because they know that when they say no, that person's feelings is going to be hurt. Because that person who is trying to get you to come out of the house really wants you to come out bad. Do I need to remind you of how Lucifer convinced the third of heaven to come out of the house? Oh, help me out somebody. Now, we're talking about angelic beings who were in heaven and Satan talked them out of the house. Help me out somebody. So I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 if he could convince Angels, uh, 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 they come out of heaven. Uh, I don't believe that any of us can stand a chance. Especially when we only got a two, three, four, five bedroom house and we're lucky. But I'm begging you this morning to say I'm sorry, but I'm in for tonight. You do know that you have to kill the enemy with kindness. Oh, help me out, Holy Ghost. But I want you to understand why it's important for you to stay in the house, uh -huh. especially while night is drawing near. Uh -huh. Isn't it ironic that uh, when night is drawing near, the insects will start getting louder? I don't know about you city folks, y'all might not understand that, but the country folks know what I'm talking about. It seems like right before night, the insects get real loud. Stay with me now. So why are you surprised that people or things are bugging you a lot more lately? Yes, sir. Seems like it's harder to maintain peace these days. 
But if you want to avoid the noise, if you want to avoid the distractions, mm -hmm. just go in the house. Yeah. Not only go in the house, but stay in the house. Yeah. Let me give you another example how we know when time is winding down. Yeah. When someone comes to your house mm -hmm. looking for trouble, yeah. any good parent a good friend, one of the first things that they will tell you is, go on in the house. Now I can talk about a situation that just happened not too long ago with a young lady who got shot by the police. But if you had anybody out there who really cared about her, they would have tell her just to go on in the... Okay, I hope y'all staying with me. Because your house should be your place of peace. Your house should be your place of refuge. Mm -hmm. Your house should be your fortress. So again, I'm sorry, but I'm in for tonight. Okay. When that voice inside of your head or that person asks you to go out, I know it wasn't easy to tell that person, no, I can't go out. I personally understand that it took hard work for you to say no, mainly because of that so-called fun you could possibly have. But not only that so-called fun, but maybe you like or admire the person that is asking you to go out. Help me out, somebody. You know you don't want to hurt Felicia Phyllis. She's a good friend to you. So you don't really want to tell her no because she looked out for you before. But now let's keep it real. Some of the best times that we had in life was when we was outside dancing with the, the devil. Let me say that one more time. Some of the best times that we had in life was when we was out dancing with the devil. Some of us got some real good stories that we can tell. But let me tell you something. Keep those stories to yourself. The only time you need to share those stories is when you're trying to pull somebody out. We don't glorify the times we was dancing with the devil. Oh, help me out, somebody. But now that we all became shining stars, we just can't hang out like we used to. Because Hanging out can cause us to get in trouble. Hanging out could bring us trouble, so we learn to invest inside the house. Because it is more dangerous for us to be outside of the house. Now that's not for everybody, but it's just for the ones who bear the light. For the one who have Jesus. You know, there's celebrities everywhere. But we can walk right by a celebrity and not know that that person is a celebrity because the light is no longer on. Okay. Yes, sir. But the one who has the light, you don't really see them like that. Because when they go out and about, they know that everybody does not have their best interests. They know that some come to kill, steal, and Stay in the house. Help me, Holy Ghost. We are facing, what we're facing right now is nothing, nothing new. Nothing new. This pandemic is nothing new. There was a time when God was delivering his people out of the house of bondage in the book of Exodus. He told Moses to put blood on the house where you are. Mm -hmm. And God said that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will destroy you. That's why you got to stay in the house. But not only stay in the house, you got to put blood on your house. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to put blood on your house. But before they can even get to the blood, they had to follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. See, everybody wants the benefits 
But don't nobody want to do the work. Let me say that one more time. Everybody wants the benefits, but not everybody want to do the work. You must work while it's day. Help me out, somebody. Which brings me to another story, because the Bible is line upon line, precept upon precept. If you see it there, you're going to see it in another place. It takes me to another story in the book of Joshua, where when Joshua and the Israelites was going to take over the city, he promised rehab. He said, hey, you got to put this scarlet cord over your door or over your house, window to be pacific. And Joshua said, unless you have brought your fathers, your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, and all of your family into your house, if any of them go outside into the streets, then their blood is on their hands. Y'all don't miss that. The blood is on their hands. They have no responsibility with that. Don't miss what I'm saying. Don't get caught up out there in the streets. I don't know how many times we funeralize people who are in the streets, but we place them in heaven. When it's clear, evident, that we didn't see the works, but yet we place them in heaven. Before they even could get to the scarlet cord, they also had to follow the instructions of Joshua. Everybody wants the benefits, but don't nobody want to follow the instructions. Help me out, somebody. But Joshua goes and says this. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our hands if a hand is laid on them. So what he was saying was, if something happened to you while you are in the house, then it's on me. Yes, yes. See, that'll preach right there. Yes, as long as you're in the house, if anything happens to you, Jesus got you covered. Yes, 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 yes. I know we want these things to be easy. I'm sorry, you got Minister Johnson today. <laughs> then it later goes on and say, but for those who love him, Mm -hmm. The word says, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledged me. Oh, help me out somebody. Isaiah later says, uh, so this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I laid a stone in Zion, mm -hmm. a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stripped with panic. So I ask the question, why are you worried? If you built your house on a solid foundation, what are you worried about? Mm -hmm. Isaiah says, my people will live in peaceful dwellings, uh -huh. places in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. So why are you bothered? I'll tell you why. You're bothered because you truly haven't done or said what Joshua said. And Joshua said that as for me, in my household, we will serve the Lord. I'm almost finished, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you long. But I hope this message stay with you all. Matthew reminds us that uh, the rain is going to come. The river shall rise. And the wind will blow against the house. Uh huh. Yet it will not fall because the soul has been built on a solid foundation. It has been built on the rock. Now, I understand we probably say, well, we're living in this, 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 this pandemic and people have been going by the wayside. But that's okay. Because even if our name get called, the good news is I'm so glad that Jesus went ahead of us uh -huh, to prepare a new house for us. 
That's why you can't worry about it. It doesn't matter. If you don't get it, God covered you. If you do get it, he'll bring you through. If you die from it, well, you're with Jesus. Either way it goes, it's a win-win situation. Help me out, somebody. For David said that uh, I will surely goodness and what? Mercy shall follow me all the... And I will dwell in the... See, I, I be worried why people don't show up to certain stuff. What you worry about? Me and Pastor just talked last week. He said he known about three homegoing service of vaccinated people. People who've been vaccinated go. I just got out of quarantine with my volleyball team and the vaccinated player test positive. You got to understand, you got to trust in the Lord. Do your best, and that's all he requires. Do your best. But don't worry, ain't no need to panic. God got you. The Bible says that he give up and he take up. Ain't no pandemic take you out, God took you home. I understand y'all, I know y'all want some feel good stuff. This is feel good. <laughs> this is good for you. Put you in a perfect place of peace, but how did you get to that perfect place of peace? He said you got to keep your mind on him. We watch the news more than we read the Bible. And all news ain't good news. It's just information. Do your research behind it. Those are TV personalities. Help me out somebody. They're there to create fear because fear keeps you watching. Okay. And you see, because I fear the Lord, I stay in the book. I will say that one more time. See, the same way you fear what's going on in the world, the same way I fear the Lord, so I have to keep my mind in the book. Oh, help me out, somebody. But that's why you got to stay in the, in the house. Stay in the house because night is coming. And you don't want to get caught out there when he come back. Pray my script to the Lord. God's word for God's people.